close with. So, because mm-hmm. to endear them, Carlos Correa, whoever it may be, uh, Jeff Luno when he was there, was he was very good to us. I feel like that's what it is with Schloss because you guys have developed a little relationship here real quick. Well, I'm gonna have to, um, you know, I, I started off on a sour mood this morning. Okay. Yeah, you know, you you got to deal with these people in town that run certain businesses, right? That run certain businesses that have monopolies over a industry in this town. Maybe if I want to watch something on television, they're responsible uh, for me being able to watch something on television, or if I want to look something up on perhaps the internet. Okay. You heard of this? The the, the Google companies? Yes. The, the, the ones that have, similar yeah. type of thing. Yeah. So I go in there Friday, Thursday, Friday. Can't remember. Doesn't matter. Go in there. They can't find my neighborhood. You know, I just bought this house, right? Can't find. They're saying they can't find my neighborhood on in their database. Well, in my HOA, it says I've got to use this company for my cable and internet. They can do that? They can tell you what company you have? Yeah, I don't, dude, I don't, I've learned that that, I don't question the HOA. It's kind of like the the hammer, like you just crack Pick up that trash. Right. And you do it. Yep. Uh, I don't know, you end up paying money to them and then they got, I don't know. I, I, whole another bell of issues there. But, go in there. And, you know, they, they want to tell me that they can't find it. And I said, everybody on my street's got it. I said, there's 20 houses on my street. <laughs> Y'all have been out there before. All right, sir. Uh, we're going to fill out this form, and we'll call you within 24 hours. Ain't heard a whistle. Nothing. And I stayed by my phone. I was like, I said, they said, stay by your phone. We'll give you a buzz. Nothing. So now I got to go back up there, and it's, it's going to be another two-hour deal. So... I had to get that off my chest before Coach Slosh gets Well, you know what? Cut the cord. What do you mean? I'll get rid of them? Just go straight like on demand everything. Just scared of my HOA. No, 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 but I don't, I don't think they can get mad at you for going on demand everything, right? I, you have to do both internet and cable with the same place. You can't kind of a la carte. I'd have to go back and read the paperwork, which I don't <laughs> want to do. Do you ever read the paperwork? No, I want somebody to tell me what I need to do, yes. and then I'll go get it done. I feel so much better when I'm, I'm signing papers for houses, too, when the uh, the our realtor, who's making Bach, by the way, tells us what we're signing instead of reading the 37 pages that I'm not going to read anyway. Oh, yeah. No, th- this is all about this. Oh, okay, well, I'll sign that. That's, yeah. I can deal with that. As long as it's somebody you trust. Right. I wouldn't have Richard and Dalton tell me what I'm signing back there. <laughs> They're not reading it either. <laughs> no, no question. Well, thank you for coming in the studio. I guess we're going to call it the bro hour. Is this new? Have I you, guess. Yeah, yeah let's I'm, do it. I'm good with it. Bro, can we talk yeah. about fitness and like lifting? and? Yeah, more lifting than fitness. Okay, yeah. Macronutrients? Yeah, fitness pizza in my mouth. <laughs> I haven't had a pizza in a while. I need, we're, we're, well, we can talk off air about <laughs> yeah. some good places to Not get some sponsor. pizza. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. All right. So uh, I will start off the, uh, the show with the question of the day, which is, did the AP poll get it right? Hey, guys, it's the end of summer. We just got some talking points. We're, we're just, it came out yesterday. I think we're all pretty happy. Well, not happy. We understand where A&M is, but I'm talking big picture, the top 25, Oklahoma being two, Bama being number one. Uh, just just your your thoughts on all that. Bron, do you have anything you want to kind of add to the AP? Well, I mean, you go back and look at recruiting classes. And uh, look, I'm fine. I know Iowa State's probably the best team they've ever had. Cincinnati with Desmond Ritter, I think he's a 30-1 to Heisman candidate. That's pretty good money. Because if you look at their schedule, if they beat Notre Dame, they're gonna, they'll probably be in the playoff. Yes, they will. Yeah. Um, and, and so when you start looking at that Desmond Ritter at 30 to 1, I mean, that's a pretty good payout. You'll put 50 bucks down and win 1500 on him if he wins it. Um, I, I, I like those odds if I'm betting anybody on the Heisman there. But if you're going to line either of those two teams up against A&M in week one or week 11, I like A&M in terms of talent. Now, I know A&M was ahead of those two schools in the AP. But there are some other polls that have got A&M somewhere like, I think Sports Illustrated had them 10th. Right. That's being just like, I, we want to glad hand the, you know, these higher rankings to these mid, like smaller schools, smaller programs, because it's a better feel-good story for our readers. You know, I don't think that there's any, like, would you pick no. Cincinnati or Iowa no. State to beat A&M? No. I do think the coaches poll got it right. I think the AP got it right. That's about where I thought A&M would start. And it's hard to put them in any higher uh Kind of with what everybody else had coming back, I think OU's a little bit of a paper tiger. I'm not sold on Spencer Rattler. I'm not sold on, uh, you know, they've got to have some guys step up on the outside, which is such a huge part of their offense. Uh, But 
and, and, and they're you know well known choke artists when they get into the playoffs. So I, I do think A and M's recipe that they've built on how to win uh, will be very well sustained with this football team. I think they can go back, depending on how the offensive line gels, which is a huge, huge issue. Big question, yeah. But I do think they can go and, and replicate what they did last year in terms of how they win games. Do you think some voters look at the schedule in determining how good that team is? Because a team like Oklahoma, Tulane, um, oh, the, it's a joke. Nebraska, West Virginia. We say this all the time, David. If, if you're Oklahoma and Texas, you've recruited at a, another planet than the rest of the conference. You should never play a close game in that conference unless it's against each other. Never. No. And that's one thing when they come over to the SEC is like, yes, you're better talent-wise than the Mississippis, but that gap is not as big. That chasm isn't as big as it was in the Big 12 when you're going to Manhattan, Kansas, or Morgantown, West Virginia, where their recruiting classes have been in the 70s and 80s. Like the worst parts of the of the SEC, and I know Vanderbilt's down there, but the worst parts of the SEC are recruiting in the 30s and 40s. Their overall team. That's right. It's composite. And look where South Carolina is. I was looking up. They're doing very well in recruiting, which was surprising. I, I just, I think that there's going to be some transition for both of those teams. But for right now, I, I mean, uh, the, the Big 12, as they've got to go out. Like, I don't think you can – play an entire schedule, a Big 12 schedule, without playing some kind of real out-of-conference game to get any kind of merit on strength of schedule. It's a cakewalk. 100% Cincinnati's agree. playing a tougher schedule than Oklahoma. Ridiculous. Is that, is that a fair statement? No, no. Ridiculous that a team that is ranked number two that has it all on, on paper to be where they need to be but consistently has to play against Big 12 teams and underperform when the big games matter. Who, who is Oklahoma's out-of-conference? Let's see. WCU? Western Carolina. And uh, Tulane. Yikes. By the way, got some great feedback. Uh, oh, no. OB didn't go anywhere, guys. Okay? Uh, he, he didn't yeah. go. Lane and yeah, Center. he did. Yeah, he, he, he went upstairs. He'll be down here. He's, he's, he, he'll be on the show, the go hour today at 9 a.m. Maybe I didn't get, do a good job of uh, illustrating that. He's, we're still going to do the 9 a.m. go hour today. We People just, are already complaining they miss OB. Oh, there's some complaining. Good. Tim and Midland. I'm not going to listen to griping. Adios. See ya. Tim. Don't come back. I bet you're listening. My, my gut is he's listening right now. That's my gut. But, Tim, we appreciate you. <laughs> Y'all need to kick Brawny off the show. I hate him. He's too strong for me. <laughs> All right. Uh, also, Brad and Brian, pro tip, just get the internet. No cable with company who must not be named. Stream TV, Hulu, la, 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 la. I'm taking your job, Tori. We'll get to you here in a moment. Let's, Hold uh, on. I need to copy and save that because yeah. I forgot what he said already. <laughs> I'll copy attention. and paste and send it to you. <laughs> Let's go around the uh, several rooms here at Tech Sags and say hello to the gang. Dalton there, hanging out with Nuno's Ninos. Good morning to you, Dalton. Uh, good morning. It's, uh, it's great to have the smell of meat in the office in the morning. Bronny, nice to see you and smell you. I'm headless. I, don't have, I can't hear him. Oh. He, he said it's great to smell meat. Oh. Good to see you. I've already lost those headphones, that, and then Jamie made a nice label, and they put them in boxes. I've already lost them. Tell him to check in the container right uh, behind him. We're not going to play t telephone here, Dalton. He, he's telling me to tell you stuff. We're just not going to do that. <laughs> but I would like, uh, hey, can you introduce our new intern there behind you, Tomas? Uh, yeah, Tomas is in the second row. He's back there with Richard doing something. I think they're working on a project. I don't think they're listening to the show, but yeah, he's back there. Yeah, he in the world. Thanks. Thanks so much, Tomas. Appreciate your first day not listening to the program. That's exactly how we wanted to start it off. We will now go to the News and Social Center, and we are joined by our journalist, Tori Esprovoa. Good morning to you, Tori. Oh, I like that title. Thanks. Hi, yeah. good morning. Hey, add it to the resume. I'm going to add it to the resume. So, can, 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 <laughs> I, can I put it all out here since we're having some fun this morning? Tori gave me a 37-page novel <laughs> as her resume to look over. I've there's, she's done more than I have. I'm impressed. I don't want to sell myself short. And if it needs more fluffing, then it needs more fluffing. <laughs> On page 19. We all need a little bit more fluffing sometimes. <laughs> when you were the White House press secretary, it just amazing work you've done, Tori. I'm really impressed with Thank that. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, so look at that. You're like you won the Emmy. You're like, yay. <laughs> so what's going on in news? Um, I got a couple of news headlines for you guys. Former Texas A&M women's basketball All-American Dia Jones signed a contract with Russian professional team WBCNZ yesterday. Um, and then I saw our uh, Heisman candidate ranking on AP in the number six with Texas A&M 
Aggies RB Isaiah, Isaiah Spiller. Um, and then lastly, I just want to put this in there. Our Texas A&M Olympian Tyra Gittins got engaged yesterday. So that was super sweet to see. Congratulations. I like that. Uh, Tyra Gittins was here in the studio a couple of weeks back. Uh, that is great news for her. And yeah, ESPN, I think it was ESPN. I have the, the column somewhere here. Had every team's uh, most likely top 25, from the top 25, most likely candidate for the Heisman. And it had Isaiah as a and I could see that. I could also see if Haynes... You know, they go undefeated season. Haynes is going to be mentioned in that as well. I mean, the best player on the team is DeMarvin Leal. Yep. But it's going to be impossible for a defensive lineman unless he just goes absolutely nuts to be mentioned when it comes to December for that Heisman talk. Isaiah's a good candidate. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see him. So let me give you the rundown, and then we'll continue with our baseball hour, which became cable internet provider hour. Uh, we have Bronny obviously here in studio, Coach Schloss Nagel. By the way, can I call him Schloss? Is that a lot? Like, do you have to be in the circle You'll of trust? You'll have to ask him that. I'm, I'm going to ask him that. I, I don't just know call if, him Coach. Sir? Sure. You know, I haven't met him yet. You know, I've seen him plenty of times and listened to him, but I, you know, I don't know if I'm on that. Like, like can I call Buzz Buzz? Or is it Coach Williams? What do you call Billy? Looch. He signed your paycheck. He's more important than any of them. That's true. I do call Jimbo Jimbo. Okay. I feel like that's what the media says to Jimbo. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll ask Coach Schlossnagel there. Uh, we also have, uh, as I mentioned, OB in the uh, 9 o'clock hour. Shereen Williams joining us as well. John Harris at 10.05. And a big one. Sir Parker joining the show at 10.35. Oh, doctor. He just graduated, right? Yeah. Congratulations to uh, Sir Parker. So we got all that and, and more. But right now, I do want to talk about my friends at the Association of Former Students. Had lunch yesterday with Porter Garner. What a great guy. This guy's got stories. He knows everybody. And he is so passionate about the association of former students. We're all members, guys. You graduate from Texas A&M. You're a member of the association of former students. But uh, giving to them, it, it, that's on a different level. And it doesn't matter what level that you want to do because the association is there for you. They are here, there, and they are everywhere. And they've provided so many different options and, and help and resources to so many different groups around campus and, and beyond the Warrior Scholar Project, the Parsons Mounted Cavalry, the Fish Drill Team. They just continue to help others. And it's not an expensive process, guys. For about $100 a year, $9 a month, you get the decal, the plaque, and the Texas Aggie Magazine. Plus, you're continuing in the oldest, most inspiring tradition of Aggies helping Aggies. I want to encourage you to give back to the association to learn more about their impact or get involved, make a gift. Visit AggieNetwork.com giving. You're listening, you're listening to Aggieland, only all sports station, The Zone, 11.50 a.m. and 93.7 FM. In remembrance of the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, the 12th Man Foundation will be standing for America to recreate the 2001 red, white, and blue out of Kyle Field. For the Aggie football home opener on September 4th, all fans in attendance are asked to wear red, white, or blue, depending on your ticket location. To find out your color assignment and where to buy your official event t-shirt, go to 12thman.com and click the quick link to red, white, and blue out. All proceeds from shirt sales benefit Texas A&M Task Force One and Points of Light Foundation. AggielandBigDeals.com. Shop local, buy local, save big. I'm struggling, can't pay full price. How about Aggieland Big Deals? Yeah, that's right. I'll be shopping local and saving big with discounts up to 30% on food, clothes, and car repair, or even entertainment and personal care. Is it really going to be convenient, though? Just download the app right on your phone. Oh, man, that's slick. Now I'm all in. Those digital certificates are fun to spend. Plus, I can print and send gifts along at AggielandBigDeals.com. The flagship station for Aggie Athletics is The Zone. Whenever the Aggies are playing, you can hear them right here at 1150 and 93.7 FM. Thank you to all our listeners and our sponsors for backing the Aggies all year long. Cooper's Old Time Pit Barbecue, Swarman Flooring, Prosperity Bank, Hargrove Insurance, Park at Tradition's Exceptional Senior Living, Cherry Rafino Broker Realtor with Coldwell Banker Apex Realtors, and Amarillo National Bank. Here's a big gig to all these sponsors. Listen to Aggie Athletics on The Zone 1150 and 93.7. FM. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. I came out in the 11th grade. Nobody was embracing you. The kids were cruel. It was very difficult to be gay. Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. The hard part was determining that I was going to do it, but I definitely didn't do it alone. At age 30, with the help of her mentor, Carissa finished her high school diploma. 
I have a mentor, Maria. She convinced me to continue my education and to finish what I started to get my diploma. Just never judges. She's a true role model. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, go get it. You can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. You can hear the Paul Feinbaum Show weekdays 2 to 4 here on The Zone. Presented by Polaris Fund Center. Paul Feinbaum is, is SEC Country. C country. And, and Aggieland is SEC Country too. Jo join Paul weekdays 2 to 4 here on The Zone. Polaris Fund Center where you can get a $500 rebate on any 450 or 570 Model A TV. Or, or $2,000 cash back on a Polaris XP1000. Polaris Fund Center where they sell and service fun, not tractors. Is the voice of the SEC. And you can hear Paul Feinbaum weekdays from 2 to 4 on The Zone. All right, get on YouTube right now. Go to the Texax page. Get on texax.com slash live because we've got ourselves a great guest here on Texax Radio presented by David Gardner Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. Tex A&M baseball head coach Jim Schlossnagel joining us here on the show. Coach, uh, you're, you're here early. I'm excited because coaches, you guys are punctual. You're here super early. On time is late. Yes, sir. <laughs> Got to be ready to go. Hey, hey there are a lot I want to get into with you. <clears throat> but first off, how are your kids doing? I know you updated us at the uh, kickoff event a couple weeks back. Just let us know how things are going. Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're doing well. We, um, they're getting ready to crank up TCU first day of class next week. And, uh, you know, they had some... Um, successful cataract surgery a couple of weeks ago and which has helped them both uh, to a degree and certainly hoping and praying that, uh, that they can continue to get some clarity on that and and uh, that the, they have a retinal disease that currently doesn't have any treatment but um, there's a lot of great research going on which we're super supportive of and hopefully uh, in the very very near future they can get some help. I didn't know your son played music. How long has he been doing that? He's been doing that for about a year and a half and uh, really uh, since he had some even more serious vision issues, he kind of turned to music and said, hey, Dad, can you buy me a guitar? And, That's pretty cool. And I was like, of course, yeah. anything you need, buddy. And uh, he's really, he's, he's, he's kind of gone and run with it. I have some buddies in country music that have been super, super supportive of him and helped him along the way. And, uh, you know, we'll see where it leads us. But uh, he's having a lot of fun with it. Yeah. The perspective you know, changes when you have children, obviously. And uh, just, I, I saw your emotions the other day at, at the kickoff event. Just how much have, have you grown as a father going through this with your children? Well, I mean, we've dealt with it since, you know, they were two, two years old. So uh, it's one of those things where um, if you're a parent, you know. I mean, I tell our players, like, you, you think you love that girl. Uh, you think <laughs> you love your wife. And certainly that's, you know, that's a high level of love. But when you have a child um, and it's just, takes it to to a level that's unexplainable and uh for anything to be wrong whether it be just having the flu or and it's certainly something that's that's uh, super serious or even you know life-threatening um it's it's a weight that never leaves you and it's always there uh you can try and put it to the side sometimes and sports helps with that a little bit but um you know i'd i'd pop out both eyes today and and walk away from this job and walk away from everything if if i could do that and uh, if that day comes, I'll do it. But, um, yeah, I appreciate your concern. Yeah, and to transition, and, you know, I think now you were, you and your staff are just incredible on the road recruiting, and that's kind of something we expected when you got the job, and especially when you announced guys like Nolan Kane and Nate Yeski as your support staff. But now that you're on campus, it feels like, for a little bit, have you gotten to learn anything about this team? Have you gotten to, to, to kind of set an expectation for what the fall is going to look like? I haven't really had a chance to learn anything about the team other than the guys that have been here in the summertime. We had our mm -hmm. freshman class here for the entire month of July, a uh, bridge program that uh, not a lot of schools are, are doing since COVID, uh, and super thankful that Texas A&M is. And uh, Jeremy McMillan, our strength coach, has done an awesome job with those young guys. And then we have a group of older guys, whether it be rehab guys or guys that were around the summer that I've had a chance mm -hmm. to spend a little bit of time with. But um, I've specifically, you know, not watched a whole lot of video uh, or – you know, I've taken some input from Hutch and, you know, Hutch, Jason Hutchins, who's just, you know, I don't know where I'd be without him. 
uh, but it's been here for 24 years. But trying to give everybody a clean slate and get an idea of, uh, you know, once they get here, to we'll learn from each other uh, day by day. But uh, for me, our, our, you know, our two biggest things that we have to do, number one, um, as Urban Meyer says, the job of a leader, number one, is to, you know, design and implement a culture. And we've tried to get that going as much as we can. We're going to spend a lot of time on that in the next three days. We have a coach's retreat we're about to start. Uh, and then when we get all the players back, we'll do that. And, this, and then the second thing, which we've kind of had to put ahead of the first one, is to acquire and develop talent. And uh, whether that be acquire coaches and help them get going, or whether that be uh, go out and, and try and add to this roster as best we can, because uh, certainly there was a lot of transition with the draft and the transfer portal and things like that. And I think we had 10 or 11 transfers coming in. That is not the way that we want to do things mm -hmm. here. Uh, we want to we want to recruit and uh, acquire the very best high school players uh, in the country and, you know, supplement the program with transfers, whether that be junior college or four uh, or four year transfers. But, uh, you know, given the given the circumstances, um, that's what we had to do in the moment. And then we'll, uh, we'll evaluate everybody throughout the course of the fall and, and put together a great roster for the spring. So you've been at it for about two months now. And, and I think we basically started some, right around the same time. I started early July. You're obviously in, in June. <clears throat> These first couple of months, how has it been? Because at the end of the day, it's the same kind of job, but it's still a new territory, new area, new, new people you're working with, even though you brought a lot of, uh, of, of the same faces. It's been awesome. Uh, you know, every day, you know, I wasn't really in College Station very much. I think we talked about that night at Coach Fisher's event. Um, Nolan Kane was on the road for four consecutive weeks. When he got back, he had to put Bluebell Park in his GPS, and, and he'd been working here for you know, a month and a half and didn't know how to get to the stadium. So, um, it, but, you know, since I've, it's slowed down a little bit in the last 10 days. Uh, the showcase circuit is, is winding down. So just being able to uh, uh, figure out the university itself and the inner workings of that and, and run by football practice or, or get a feel for College Station, Brian, uh, has been amazing. We're all super excited. Uh, Ross and the administration have been super supportive. Uh, you know, on any given day, we're talking about new paint in the offices to, you know, a grad, tra a, a grad transfer. So um, just hitting the ground running and uh, just trying to make an impact on the program every single day, regardless of the area in, in which we're doing that, recruiting, facility, um, culture, uh, you know, all those things to give our got ourselves and, and, and our players the best chance for success. You know, whenever I research coaching changes and it's something that as a coach myself, I like to get into that part of, you know, it, with what we do at 12, Every time a, one of my groups graduates, I go get another group, right? And so you, you have to implement your culture within that group. And so I like to listen to guys talk about culture. And the way I've read it, the best way I've read it is you change everything from the ballpark all the way down to the shoelaces. How much change can A&M fans, when they come out and watch, how much change can they expect to, for them to be able to see? Well, you know, I mean, I think uh, some of those things you have to see over time. Uh, and if, if you're not within the program itself mm -hmm. and see it on a daily basis, then, you know, um, uh, you, you, you won't notice it. But first and foremost, I didn't inherit a, like some horrible program. Right. I mean, Coach Childress, obviously, uh, you know, there's only been three coaches in the last however many years, 50, 60 years, and did an unbelievable job, 13 consecutive regionals, two trips to the College World Series. And, and like I've said, if the ball bounces a couple different ways in 2015 and 16 against TCU, uh, this is a whole different story in my mind. Um, and that's, you know, that's unfortunately, that's the, that's the world we're living in. But um, I think there'll be uh, things over the course of time that will be pretty drastic, whether it be game, game, man, game, game operations, things that go on in the stadium, things that, you know, I like to see done um, that maybe some people here have, have been wanting to do for a while. And, and it just wasn't uh, the way they did it in the past. And that doesn't make it uh, better. It just makes it different. Mm -hmm. And there's certainly going to be, there's going to be things that go on that, uh, that some people like, and some people don't. I mean, People ask me all the time, are, you still, are the guys going to still wear their pants up? You know, <laughs> things like that. And, uh, you know, we can talk about that if you want. But, it, you know, those are, those are thing, you know, th th things that I'm all about two things. W what gives us the best chance to win and what, and what gives a fan an awesome experience to where when they, when they walk away from the ballpark, you know, hopefully they're rooting for the Aggies. But if they're just an, a novice fan, did they walk away and say, man, that was fun. Mm -hmm. I want to come back and do that again. And uh, so that's what we're – you know, over time, you know, I, I think you'll see some changes that way. Can you stick around for a little bit more? Sure. All right, we'll do one more segment here with uh, Coach Schlossnagel here on Tech Sags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers.
I'm Chelsea Reber with your community calendar on The Zone. Hundreds of books geared to young readers will be on sale Saturday, August 28th at the Claire B. Mounts Library in downtown Bryan. Doors open to members of the Bryan College Station Friends of the Library at 9 a.m. and to the general public at 10 a.m. Loss of a Spouse is a free seminar on Sunday, August 29th from 4 to 6 p.m. at Peace Lutheran Church. Email Rhonda at PeaceLutheranBCS.org for more information. Trail Life USA Troop 1836 is hosting an open house on Tuesday, August 31st. Find Trail Life Troop 1836 on Facebook for more information. Help the Brazos Valley Food Bank bring hope to the table. Go online to bvfb.org. Do you love Aggie football? Then join the Blue Chi Hour, powered by King Ranch Saddle Shop, live from the tap every Monday and Thursday night at 6 p.m. Stop by for dinner and a drink or listen on the Zone 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. I'm Chelsea Reber on The Zone. Here's Brad Beard of Intercon. I guess you've noticed how much your home's cooling bill has been recently. Perhaps there are rooms that are never the right temperature. There's a way to save some of that expense while adding security, reducing dust, pollen infiltration, create a quieter, more comfortable atmosphere, enhancing the beauty and value of your home. All of the above and more can be accomplished by letting your neighbors at Intercon replace your windows with premium Burris vinyl windows. Intercon is a locally owned and operated source of custom-made vinyl windows, which come directly from the factory to your home and are installed by Intercon full-time employees. Vinyl windows come in three colors and virtually any style or shape. Call us for a free no-obligation quote for your home. We present our products without any pressure sales tactics. We price jobs by opening and are happy to do the jobs and stages if requested. Compare our quality, reputation, and price, and you'll soon have Burris windows installed by Intercon in your home too. Whether you have new construction or an existing home, let the fine folks from Intercon help your home energy efficiency year round. Call Brad Beard of Intercon today at 823-3639. That's 823-3639. Our publications reach every corner of the Brazos Valley and we want to partner with you in sharing your message with the community. You may recognize a few of our Brian Broadcasting publications. Best of the Brazos Valley. Brazos Life, the annual manual. Welcome home, Brazos Valley. Brazos family. Brazos Wellness. Brazos Valley Bride. Peace, Brazos Christian Life. With the combined power of seven magazine titles, 11 radio stations, and digital solutions, Brian Broadcasting Publications can help you be heard. Call 979-695-9595 to learn more. The best is yet to come in College Station. Chase Lane is in for a touchdown! Yes! Head coach Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies are ready to rise to the top of the SEC. Swing to Anias. He's in the end zone. A six-yard reception. Join us Saturday, September 4th. It's the season opener versus the Kent State Golden Flashes. On your home for Aggies football. The Texas A&M Sports Network. Listen to Aggie football on 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Online at RadioAggieland.com. Or Or. tell your smart speaker to play Sony 1150. Tex Ags Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. If you uh, want to chime in, you certainly can do so here on the show. You can text the AMB text line 979-693-1150 and our BCS I Associates hotline 979-693-1150. We continue our dialogue with Coach Jim Schlossnagel here in studio. And Coach, I do want to ask you, when you're talking to these recruits, what does the brand a and mean? When you go to their houses, when you talk to them on the phone, when you're, when you're tweeting at them, what, what does A&M mean to them? Well, certainly uh, for a young man in Texas, uh, most of those guys are pretty knowledgeable about uh, the power of this degree. And I believe that uh, decisions are made mainly in three areas, you know, academics, player development, and team success, right? So, um, you know, how is this degree going to work for me over the course of time? And so I think the closer you are to College Station, um, the more you know about that and the further you are away, the more we have to kind of sometimes educate them. And, uh, but for me, it's, you know, for me personally, I didn't realize even up in Fort Worth, um, recruiting against Texas A&M, I didn't realize what a, you know, one of the top 10 public universities in the United States and what this degree for does for you and the number of, you know, over 500,000 former students and that network. And, and so we're constantly selling that. And then, you know, the pl- player development piece is something that, you know, we hire a coaching staff, you, uh, develop the facilities to where we can look at a young man and not just recruit him to Texas A&M and say this is the best place for you to get better over the course of the next several years. Um, but uh, when the Major League Draft comes up, say, hey, 
this is how this is going to, you know, do you want to be a professional player or do you want to be a major league player? There's a big difference. If you, you know, if, if you want to be a pro player, sign today. If you want to be a big leaguer, the numbers overwhelmingly say that you should go to college. And that's actually the fastest route to the big leagues. And then the third area, team success, um, that's our job is to go, put ourselves in position to win championships. So the brand itself, uh, it's super powerful. Um, even during our, you know, we went to five College World Series in 10 years at TCU. Uh, you know, it was still tough to get to, to recruit against A&M. You know, this is a place where kids grew up wanting to go to school. And we had to do, a, I mean, a, TCU is an awesome place, but we had to do a lot more convincing than we did recruiting. And here, you know, you're, you're certainly swimming in a way deeper pool um, in, in the SEC West. And it's certainly a lot, very, very competitive. But uh, there's a lot of kids that already want to go to school here, and then we have to decide if it's the right fit. You mentioned those coaches. Can you give us a 50,000-foot view of what you've learned about Nate Yeski and Michael Early in terms of teachers of the game, and even Nolan Cain, like, can, can you give us a summary of, of kind of what Nate Yeski's expectations are for his pitchers, and then kind of what will the offense look like under Coach Early? Well, I think a uh, couple of things. Number one, we haven't had a chance. We're getting ready to have those conversations in the next three days. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a staff retreat that's uh, going to start today and run through the en end of day Thursday. And I've asked all those guys to, you know, present to all of us, um, you know, how they were, how they're going to sell, uh, you know, development as a pitcher, development as a hitter, uh, because we haven't really been together uh, as a staff. I think we've been together one day, everybody wow. in, in the office. Wow. So. Um, sorry, I'm not avoiding your question, no, that's um, not. That's, uh, but because we literally, uh, we literally haven't been in the same office, yeah. uh, you know, except for one day, which I think was yesterday. And so, uh, but certainly, you know, I didn't hire, we had those conversations when I hired those guys, you know, I wasn't just going to pick a guy out, you know, off a list and say, well, he's done, he's been successful in the past. And so, you know, uh, I think in general, uh, from a pitching standpoint, this sounds very uh, elementary, but it should be. And that's, uh, you know, to fill up the strike zone and, and limit free bases. Don't walk you know, people. You know, and uh, I don't care if you kick it to home plate. If you get them out, you get them out. The analytics are important, but, the, but my favorite analytic, number one, is, you know, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure when, if we score one more run than the other team, uh, the analytics on that are pretty darn good when the game's over. And, you know, secondly, just out percentage, you know, how many, get, how many, who, who gets people out? Right. And whether it's 95, 96, or whether it's 84, 85, and you sink it with a slider, you know, none of those things, uh, you know, none of those other things are really matter if you don't, if, if you don't get people out. So from a pitching standpoint, you know, we want to fill up the strike zone. We want to control the run game. We want to field our position. Uh, we want to continue to develop over time. I'm, I'm a big believer in a, bull, in a strong bullpen. Uh, the only way to have a strong bullpen is to use it. And a lot of times, you know, every single game has value to me. So it's not, you know, so, sometimes I'll get asked early in the season, well, how are you going to use these games? Well, we're going to use the win the game. Right. You know, we're going to try to win the game because at the, at the end of the year, when you're sitting there on the bubble, the NCAA tournament, or you're trying to host a regional, or you're trying to be a national seed, whatever that is, you look back and every single game counts. And I know, I, I mean, I cer certainly understand the value of the SEC and how tough that's going to be. Um, but we have to win, you know, try to win them all and put ourselves in best, best position. And from from a uh, offensive standpoint, I believe that you play offense offensively. You know, we want to be aggressive on offense, conservative on defense. On defense, pick the ball up, and make sure we get an out. Don't try to get two before we get one, all the coachy things. And then from an offensive standpoint, we don't want to be reckless. We don't want to be careless, but we want to try and push the envelope. And um, we want to be selectively aggressive as hitters. Uh, the most valuable uh, offensive stat for me is just getting on base. And, and then... Um, when we do get our swing off, we want to try to, you know, drive the baseball and use the whole field to hit. I'm not a launch angle guy or any of that stuff. I want to develop good uh, competitive hitters that understand the strike zone, that uh, aren't afraid to hit with two strikes. We're not going to be afraid to hit with two strikes. A, um, you know, some of our best offenses at TCU were teams that struck out a lot, but most of them actually were looking. And that's because they knew the strike zone Sorry to say it, better than the umpire. Yep. And so, and then when they did get their swing off, they did a lot of damage and had a high slugging percentage. So that's a, that's the perfect offense, one that puts pressure on a defense with stolen bases. Uh, we stole 120 bases at TCU last year. We had some fast guys. Um, and w you know, when you when you're an aggressive base running team, uh, you're going to make some mistakes on the bases with young players. Uh, but as long as your percentage is high, I can live with that. Fans sometimes. I think most of our years at TCU, we stole bases at about an 83 to 85% clip. 
If you can get that, that's pretty yeah. darn good. But a lot of times a fan, and sometimes me, you know, when, when, when you screw up on the bases, it's ugly. Right. And you're like, oh, you know, and fans get mad. And, and <laughs> if, you're, if you're eight and a half out of ten, everybody remembers the one and a half. Nobody ever, you know, re- remembers the eight, 85% times you were successful. So not a big guy on the uh, sacrifice bunt uh, unless it absolutely is called for. I'd, I, I do like the bunt uh, game as a weapon, as an offensive weapon to put pressure on a defense uh, and advance the runners if we have to do it that way. But I would prefer to look to to, to run the bases and, and, and swing the bat. So as I was preparing for this interview, I, I ran around a quote, I ran across a quote that you, and I'm, I'm going to paraphrase it here, champions act like champions from Bill Walsh. Right. When, when you look at the coaches in other sports, other professions, beyond Bill Walsh and even Bill Walsh, who, who do you look up to? Who do you model your, your coaching philosophy by? Wow. I mean, I study coaches, so, uh, you know, you can go back to when I first started coaching and I was, you know, reading about Tom Landry and John Wooden and guys like that. And, but today, uh, obviously coach Saban and, and, uh, I mean, I've, I I do a lot of reading and listening to, uh, urban Meyer and a guy named Tim kite. They, they do, they've done a podcast. that's just absolutely incredible that I would encourage not just coaches, but CEOs and stuff to listen to. But, um, you know, just, just you, you constantly trying. Nothing is really uh, new, you know. You, you're 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 going to pick and choose things from different people that feel like fit your personality and fit what you're trying to do at a particular place. And and so for me, um, you know, those those guys are probably at the top. Um, but it's not just them. I mean, I'll study. You know, I'll go to softball practice here. I'll go to basketball practice and watch Buzz do what he does. And and those are the things I'm looking forward to being able to do at, at Texas a and Real quick. Can you give us, do you have a, an idea of when the fall schedule will start? And then I do want to ask you, because as a coach, looking at a coach, I admire your practice structure. And I think you can determine a lot about a coach, about how his team practices. And I've always enjoyed watching your practices. So fall schedule, and then kind of can you take me through like what a typical practice structure looks like for you? Sure. Our fall schedule, uh, school starts late, uh, you know, August 30th. So, you know, we, we have a full another week of, without or two weeks without it so um we'll get our skill hours going and almost the first week of school and then uh, i think we're going to start fall practice as of now on september 21st i think that's a tuesday you get we'll have about 27 or 28 practices over the course of the 45 day window that we're allowed we're going to have two fall games um we have and we don't have the contract signed yet but our plan is to have a a fall game on a friday night before the alabama football game and on a friday night before i believe the south carolina uh, football games. So those should be a lot of fun and, and should have some good crowds, hoping yeah. to have some good crowds. That'll be, we need to see our guys compete in those settings. But, uh, and then in terms of our practice structure, uh, the fall itself, um, you won't certainly want to inter squad a lot, <clears throat> but we also have a lot of teaching to do. So um, our g- general practice plan will stretch, you know, 215 ish, something like that, depending on class schedules. Um, we'll have early work, optional early work before that. We'll get our stretch in. We go immediately to base running. I think anything you put at the front front end of practice sends a message to the players of what's important. Um, the old days of having your base running at the very end of practice and conditioning, using yeah. that as your conditioning, that's a disrespect to how, how important base running is in a game. Um, we'll do our base running, and while you know the pitchers seem to t- you know they have nine million different things to do and tubes to use and mm-hmm. balls to to get loose, so they need some time. And then we'll time our base running. Uh, session to when the pitchers are ready to play catch. Everybody get their arm loose. We normally go into some level of team defense, some level of individual defense, and then um, you know some level of offense, whether it be a, you know, a competitive batting practice, uh, inner squad game, a coach pitch game, a machine pitch game. Um, we, we'll use machines a lot. That's one thing that's really changed the game, I believe, as velocity of pitchers has increased you know average the average fastball in the big leagues now is right around 94 miles an hour and uh, you see it at at at, uh, at, at the amateur uh, high school and sh- showcase level that you know everybody throws 90 miles an hour anymore right and so hitters are they see it more often and so they're they're now more able to handle that so we'll use these the pitching machines today put a lot of pressure on hitters and we'll use those a lot to prepare them for high level college baseball um, but I'm just a big believer in practicing what happens the most in a game and being able to handle the baseball on defense, limiting the other team, uh, limit their free bases, and, and, you know, and, and, and maximize ours. So those are the, you know, that'll be the focus in, in, in developing this club. 
Jim, final thing from me, at least, uh, Bluebell, the future. Um, I know you have a, a vision for how you want it to look, and just, just give us some thoughts there. You know, I just, I just feel like, uh, you know, I met with Mississippi State in 2018, I believe it was. I uh, went down and looked around there uh, before they hired Coach Lamonis, who's done an awesome job, national champions. Um, I just, you can't tell me that uh, in Starkville, Mississippi, if you can, if you can draw twelve to 14,000 fans a game, and I understand they have an awesome tradition and history of, of attendance, that we can't do that here. There's just no way. We have 71,000 students. You have over 500,000 living alumni that are pretty close. I mean, living former students, sorry. And, uh, and, you, and Houston's so close. Uh, so we, we, we have to create a ballpark uh, that allows people to come and have a great time. And I know there's a big waiting list for tickets. We need to create space for those people to be here. And we're going to have to do that – uh, and build those things before uh, we have the success on the field so that we can time those things uh, at, at, at the right uh, level. So, um, I, you know, I, I would love to see seating around the outfield all the way around, a 360-degree uh, concourse. Um, obviously, you, you're going to have to have some uh, areas for high-level donors or people that want that, um, you know, their own space. Uh, but you also have to have space for the the, the – big Aggie fan that's been coming to games for 40 or 50 years that doesn't want to pay that. And so I think, you know, I, I, I'm going to push to have, to have all those things. Uh, that's one of the reasons that, that I left a great job uh, to come here is because Ross has that same vision as well. And now, you know, our job is to design it and go raise the money and build it. And I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that's going to happen hopefully in the next 18 to 24 months. Real quick before we let you get out of here, I've got one question. How much will you use what's going to happen across the street this fall as a recruiting tool in terms of what Jimbo's built, the anticipation for the football season, and obviously the atmosphere it generates? Oh, yeah. I mean, every day, you yeah. know. I mean, every day. I mean, you know, to go to foot, you know, I go to football practice, and, you know, so social media is just so – it has so many negative things about it, but there's a lot of positives if, if it's done correctly and – and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm an old school guy, but certainly, uh, you know, I went to practice and then, um, you know, just to see how he, how he runs things, the unbelievable staff and the level of athlete and speed, uh, you know, getting guys in here on visits. Uh, you know, he's a, he, he's a baseball fan. I heard him uh, t on his press conference the other day talking. Played at Sanford. Yeah. yeah. And, and he was talking about uh, uh, Nolan Ryan and Tom Seaver. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, that, that's awesome. So. Gary Patterson and I are we're super close friends, and he was super helpful in recruiting. And um, you know, we took by you know guys by to see him when needed if they were college football fans. And mm -hmm. and certainly, you know, we'll do that here. But I haven't seen a football game here yet. I, you know, I haven't been to Kyle Field for yeah. a, for a football game. So uh, you know, it's it, it, it's going to be awesome. You know, I'm I'm jacked, and, and and I think winning breeds winning. You know, and just to be around winners like him, and and to have our recruits and our and our players around that level of, of excellence uh, can only help us. Thank you so much for coming in. Yeah, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. yeah, thanks for having I've been, me. I've been wanting to meet you, and it's, it's been great. So we look forward to seeing you. And Coach always. Slosh is fine, by the way. I heard oh, you. You heard that? <laughs> so I heard, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I didn't know if I'm in the circle of trust yet, so I'm good. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We'll, right. we'll start there. All right, we'll start there. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate yep. your time here. And, and by the way, if I, I guys, I want you guys to picture a scenario. You got Bronny over here who lifts weights all the time, and then you got Gabe Bach, right? And let's say they get into an arm wrestling match, and Gabe like rips the bicep off his arm. I'm not saying this is going to happen. I just want you to picture it, and he's got to go to an emergency room. Where is he going to go? Caprock Emergency. That's right. The Caprock Health System, guys. It's hurting. He needs help. They're going to do it immediately. That's what they do. Their sole purpose is to make you feel better. They've got the emergency care, the hospital admission, the outpatient testing, the telehealth that has become very popular here uh, during COVID and whatnot. they got locations all around town, the 24-hour ER in South College Station, voted the best in the Brazos Valley, and the Caprock Hospital with ER in Bryan. They've got state-of-the-art facilities designed for patient healing and family friendliness. Check them out. Caprock ER hospitals are fully capable of treating all emergency medical situations. This is Eggie Land's home for sports. The Zone 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Since 1957, Slovakic Sausage in Snook has been making the best tasting sausage in Texas from the same family recipe. Slovakic is the official sausage of Texas A&M Athletics. Whether it's from the grill to the family gathering or from the pit to the neighborhood party, serve the sausage voted best in the Brazos Valley. Serve Slovacic. Be sure to come in and check out their full-service meat market, relax on the front porch, or grab some fresh kolaches from their bakery on your way out. Slovacic Sausage, Highway 60 in Snook.
The Bellucci Hour is back. It is back at the tap every Monday and Thursday at 6 p.m. thanks to King Ranch Saddle Shop. Join Billy Lucci of Texags, texags.com, Texags Radio, and the Lucci Cast, along with Zach Taylor, the Infomaniac, and Sports Director Brian Broadcasting. Monday, Thursday, 6 p.m., it's the Bellucci Hour happy hour and it's all thanks to king ranch saddle shop let the Bellucci hour get you ready for aggie football 2021 the flagship station for aggie athletics is the zone whenever the aggies are playing you can hear them right here at 11:50 and 93.7 fm thanks to our listeners and our sponsors for backing the aggies all season long first financial bank brian college station toyota rudy's barbecue schulte roofing the Sleep Station, and Pioneer Steel. Here's a big gig to all these sponsors. Listen to Aggie Athletics on The Zone 1150 and 93.7 FM. I've got a math question for you. When you add tolerance, subtract prejudice, and multiply efforts to treat one another with respect, what do you get? Less division. And school sports have it down to a science. Looking for an example of what can happen when we realize there's more that unites us than divides us? Look no further than high school sports in Texas. This message presented by the Texas University Interscholastic League and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. This is ESPN Radio. Head coach Mike Boynton, Oklahoma State basketball. Men's talent, work ethic that's been unmatched by any other kid I've coached. Talking to Matt Nagy right now, the head coach of the Chicago Bears. When I say the room is healthy, Andy Dalton is doing everything he possibly can to help Justin. Charles Haley, Pro Football Hall of Famer. I always believe that the fans, they're the ones that paid my salary. I always felt like I owed them something. Talking to Pat Connaughton right now, NBA champion. The talking head saying it can't be done. Giannis has to leave. It just makes it that much sweeter in the end. Rams head coach Sean McVay. Some of the most difficult parts of playing the quarterback position are really where he illustrates what a special player he is. Hall of Famer Oscar Robertson. It's a partnership. Now the players can decide if two or three want to get together. Years ago, owners could stop that. Played a tight end position for the Green Bay Packers, Jamichael Finley. If you got a guy saying, I'm not taking that shot, guess what that looks like? Oh, we ain't got a team player here. ESPN Radio, weeknights and weekends on Sports Radio 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. The Zone. I don't know about you guys, but I think uh, I'm going to start texting Coach Schloss. We're buddies now. We're, I'm in the circle of trust. He's right now driving off in his car. He's like, gosh, dog it, he does have my number. Yeah, I'm going to text him. Yeah, we're going to be yep. boys. Like, I'm going to try to get invited to dinner, too, and Your hang out. Your number's going to get blocked. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but you know what? I felt like we hey, I, there was, was a connection awesome. there. He was great, wasn't he? I mean, it's the same level of what's happening right across the street with Jim. Exactly. Jimbo. You get the same vibe. You, you, the recruiting, you know, no, no sleep on the recruiting trail, the everyday grind, something he said in his introductory press conferences. I'm not going to go a day without trying to make this program better. You know, he's got all these irons in the fire and still made time to come talk to us. Uh, that was pretty cool. We appreciate that very much. It is Texas Radio presented by David Garner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. Really, really appreciate Coach uh, Schloss coming by. And uh, I'll tell you what, you can tell he, he, the way he answers things. He obviously has a lot of respect for what Rob did here. And you, you could see that the way he spoke. But he's not content. He's going to take it to another level. And I really feel we're going to be talking about him. or We already are. But in four years, the way we talk about Jimbo. You know, he's come in and created such a splash that we're spending a lot of time before the fall even starts talking about Aggie baseball with a preseason top 10 football team getting ready to start games. And that's the kind of impact he's made. Uh, since he's been hired. And, and look, I don't know what the roster is going to look like this next year. I don't think he knows what it looks like, especially as a team, how it all gels together with the transfers and stuff. But it's going in a completely different direction. I mean, give this guy two or three years, and I think we're starting to talk about A&M hosting Super Regionals being national seats. 100%. Let's go to the News and Social Center. Tori Espervo. Hello, Tori. How's Hi. that resume coming? It actually is now down to a page and a quarter. So we're getting there. I mean, From I'm just impressed. 30 pages you said I had, which I didn't have. It was only it, two. That was an embellishment. <laughs> it was a page and three quarters, wasn't it? <laughs> there were so many bullet points. Listen, when you sit in that chair... <laughs> You got to embellish. Listen, it's just Things part just of the job. Things just come to you. Opportunities just come, and you got to just 
You said 37. I was like, oh, I would have went with five. She but. put on there, like, I got paper from the supply cabinet. She put, you got know. coffee from Billy Lucci. I drove to oh, work. Know how to make it. Delete that line. You hear what she said? Yeah. And hey, we got about 30 seconds. Okay, I got Aggie Hunt saying, I agree with most of it. I would swap Georgia and OU. Still think folks are a little too high on the Iowa State and Cincinnati as well. I understand with Iowa State. People say, prove it to me again. And some people feel that way about A&M. Prove it to me again. They will prove it to you this year. Yeah, they got I mean, I agree. I could have got long-winded there. I agree. Oh, we got like 10 seconds yeah. left. Thank you for coming in for the bro hour. The bro hour. And tomorrow we'll do a football version of the bro hour, bro half hour. What uh, what we got in the gym today? Today is a focus day on uh, shoulders and traps. Delts, baby. Let's go. Boulder shoulders. Love it. All right, Bronny, thanks so much. All right, we got the go hour in the 9 o'clock version of it coming up next. He was the heart of your family. And he taught you our history. He helped you fix your first flat. He was the best backyard DJ around. And every time he'd tell a story, he'd own the room. But now more than ever, he may feel alone. Today, older adults and their loved ones are struggling to connect in a time when connection has never been more important. But there is something we can do. Embrace our older loved ones through StoryCorps Connect. With StoryCorps Connect, you can honor seniors remotely with an interview about their life. Every interview will be archived at the Library of Congress, becoming part of American history, so that years from now, future generations can listen in. All right, Grandpa, what's one piece of advice you have for me? Just three words, sweetheart. Live with courage. The man that had the best stories still has plenty of stories to tell. So connect virtually and share the conversation of a lifetime at storycorpsconnect.org slash AARP. Connect, honor, share. StoryCorps Connect. A message from AARP, StoryCorps, and the Ad Council. Get connected and be in the know with The Zone. Follow us on Twitter at Zone1150. Like us on Facebook, Zone1150. Subscribe to our daily newsletter at thezone1150.com. This is KCNE College Station, Brian. WTAW, I'm Chelsea Reber with a news update on The Zone. Brazos County Health Authority Dr. Seth Sullivan tells reporters that local vaccination rates are 19% of 12 to 15 year olds and 39% of 16 to 49 year olds. Among the local children who have been vaccinated are the teenage daughters of the president of the College Station region of Baylor Scott and White, Jason Jennings. When my 19 year old returned to college last week, you always worry about your 19 year old mainly being on the road. But having that vaccine and being in class now definitely felt a whole lot better for being vaccinated. And as my 15-year-old starts high school tomorrow, the same is likewise. The chief medical officer at CHI St. Joseph, Dr. Kia Parsi, says his 15-year-old son and his 15-year-old nephew are also vaccinated. Four Bryan police officers responded last Saturday to a report of gunfire at a club north of Northgate where several vehicles were damaged. While no arrests have been announced about the gunfire, three people were arrested for their involvement in a fight that followed the gunfire. It's the 44th time 29-year-old Marcellius McGee of Bryan has been booked in the Brazos County Jail. A College Station police officer says he was punched in the cheek by a man accused of hitting his girlfriend in the face in front of her two sons. According to the CSPD arrest report, the officer shot the man with a taser three times. 34-year-old Reese Walker of College Station was arrested for a family violence assault, assaulting a police officer, and evading and resisting arrest. Three people filed on the last day to run in November's local elections. Marie Ann Masso Holland joins David Levine and Dennis Maloney in pursuing the College Station City Council's Place 6 position. Meng Mangu filed for the College Station ISD Place 2 seat after Amy Algie switched to seeking the Place 1 seat. Incumbents Mike Nugent and Amanda Green did not seek re-election. There are no contested elections for three Bryan ISD school board seats. I'm Chelsea Reber on The Zone. Question, would you pick a chain barbecue place over a hometown joint? Do you root for East Coast universities instead of the local team? Nah, then why choose a big Wall Street bank? A&B started in 1892. Five generations later, we're still owned and operated by the same Texas family. We support this community. We value your privacy. We make quick decisions, and we hate red tape. We answer to you, not Wall Street. Bank with A&B. Family owned, Texas proud. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. 
In remembrance of the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, the 12th Man Foundation will be standing for America to recreate the 2001 red, white, and blue out of Kyle Field. For the Aggie football home opener on September 4th, all fans in attendance are asked to wear red, white, or blue, depending on your ticket location. To find out your color assignment and where to buy your official event t-shirt, go to 12thman.com and click the quick link to red, white, and blue out. All proceeds from shirt sales benefit Texas A&M Task Force One and Points of Light Foundation. Good morning, sports fans. I'm Zach Taylor with your Aggie Sports Minute on The Zone. The Sports Minute is brought to you by Hoka Metal Roofing and Supply. Call 936-825-0500 or click hokosupply.com. Texas a and football comes in at number six in this year's Associated Press preseason poll. That marks the highest preseason ranking for the Aggies since earning the number three spot back in 1995. And staying on the gridiron, the new name, image, and likeness laws continue to make an impact across the country, including right here in Aggieland. However, Coach Jimbo Fisher says it hasn't caused the team to stray off course. It hasn't been a distraction. The thing about the NI, it has not been a distraction. And guys are hitting, some of the guys are having really great success with it. And what I understand, I mean, making a lot of money. I mean, a lot of opportunity. So that's what it's about. I'm very happy for them, but haven't let it be a distraction to the team at all. And they've kept... Everything's separate as far as when it's time to work and do the things. They're doing all they're supposed to be doing. So it's been very good for us. Now one of those players looking to cash in is wide receiver Hezekiah Jones, who says he's already filed for an LLC for his clothing line. The season debut of the Aggie Soccer Hour with Coach G is tonight at Rudy's Barbecue. G and the ladies are fresh off a 2-0 exhibition win over Baylor and are slated to kick off the regular season this Thursday at top-ranked Florida State. The show begins at 6 o'clock on Gospel 97.3 FM. And that's been your Aggie Sports Minute, brought to you by Hoko Metal Roofing and Supply. On The Zone, I'm Zach Taylor. The flagship station for Aggie Athletics is The Zone. Whenever the Aggies are playing, you can hear them right here at 1150 and 93.7 FM. Thank you to all our listeners and our sponsors for backing the Aggies all year long. Cooper's Old Time Pit Barbecue, Swarman Flooring, Prosperity Bank, Hargrove Insurance, Park at Tradition's Exceptional Senior Living, Cherry Rafino Broker Realtor with Coldwell Banker Apex Realtors, and Amarillo National Bank. Here's a big gig to all these sponsors. Listen to Aggie Athletics on The Zone 1150 and 93.7. FM. It sounds like Pac Man and a movie or sitcom from the 80s. Welcome back to Tech Sags Radio, presented by David Gardner's Jewelers in the Rollo Insurance Studio. And there was a lot of panic in the world. Panic. People were texting, tweeting, what happened to Olin? Where's Olin? No vacations in August. Well, Olin's here. We just kind of flip-flop things around to accommodate Bronny and, and Schloss here in the first hour. Olin, how are you, sir? Uh, I'm good. You know, I'm kind of got that feeling that uh, kind of feeling like De- Dennis Eckersley, you know, spent uh, eight years in the starting rotation, now got relegated to the bullpen. You're, you're middle relief right now, my I friend. I'm middle relief. Middle relief, but you know what? It was. I guess he was a closer, so I can't even be Eckersley. You can you can do the ten o'clock hour. You yeah. can do whatever. You, Ob, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know that's not true. Well, but, but we, moving on. Moving right on. So, I, first off, were you able to listen to any of the uh, interview with Coach Schlossnagel? And uh, I didn't. I was actually getting some notes together for a first. article I'm going to be writing later. Well, I will tell you this. The guy is, uh, he, he just, and I think Dalton just said it a moment ago, off air, the same on air. It was cool. It was just, it was a nice conversation. I really appreciate talking to my new best friend. Oh, he, he's a really sharp guy. You know, that was pretty evident uh, well, throughout his career. But when he came here uh, and, uh, you know, just at his introductory press conference, what I liked about him um, is that he talks like a normal person. Mm-hmm. It's not all just baseball speak you know I don't I, you know some coaches you sit there and if you don't and I do understand baseball speak but if you don't you might not wonder what all they're saying he just talks like an intelligent guy who happens to also coach baseball yeah yeah it, it, it was a good interview and uh, as we continue on through the the end of summer here with school starting a couple of weeks and A&M starting things off here on September 4th against Kent State the AP poll came out and 
we've talked about polls all summer long and what they mean and what they don't mean. But uh, I asked the question, and by the way, if you want to be a part of the conversation, you can, 979-693-1150, the BCSI hotline, or on the AMB text line, 979-693-1150. The question, did the AP poll get it right? Look, this is all preseason stuff. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. A&M is where they are. I think you even told me a while back you wouldn't be surprised anywhere between 6 and, was it 10, 6 and 12 perhaps? Uh, I Yeah, um, I even said that it, I wouldn't be offended if they put them 11th because of the fact that you have a new quarterback and you've rebuilt offensive line. And very often those are reasons to uh, subtract points. Uh, and it's a, legit, it's a legitimate concern, but – when you got nine defensive starters coming back and you have the skill positions, the weaponry that A&M has, um, I have no, uh, no problem, or obviously not, but I can understand rank them as high as six too, especially when you see the, the, the five that's ranked ahead of them. So I'll go through it. Bama one. Right. Oklahoma two. Okay. Clemson three. Mm-hmm. Ohio State four. All right. Georgia five. Right. So the top five are teams that have been in the playoff, have won conference championships, Oklahoma. Now, is that an easy conference to win? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I did hear you ask Broniger, hey, do you think uh, the voters look at their schedules? And I can tell you, absolutely they, they do. Yeah, they have to, right? So <laughs> well, you, you would think you're going to look at it and say, okay, just who's the best team, who has the best talent, but you can't help but look at Oklahoma and Iowa State and say, if you don't go 12-0 and 0, at the worst 11-1, and 1, it's an abject failure because it's true that th- even Iowa State, there's not a team on Oklahoma's schedule other than Texas that recruits at the same level they do. I mean – your receivers, no matter how, no matter who they are, that Spencer Rattler's throwing to, are better athletes than the guys trying to cover them. You should win. If you don't win, um, yeah, you, know, you you should be, you know, just just uh, dismissed. And it's why I was so miffed last year when Oklahoma lost two games early and guys like Herb Herb Street say, well, it shouldn't matter now because look who they are now. No, it, it absolutely should it, matter. It's all part of the story. So, um, uh, yeah, it's like, hey, here's the guys we like, and so it really doesn't matter what their outcomes is. These are just the guys we like. So I understand that you're going to put Oklahoma second. I understand nobody's going to complain that you put Alabama first, and Clemson and Ohio State and Georgia have been – in the playoff and and played for national championships in the next in the last few ge- games and they all are very talented. So uh, I look at it as A and M's number one among the teams that aren't just the automatic picks. Right. So I'm looking at the breakdown by <laughs> conference SEC with five and, and as I mentioned three of those in the top six and you've got uh, five in the top twenty five number thirteen Florida number sixteen LSU the Big Ten with five Pac twelve with five. The ACC with three, the Big 12 with three, Sun Belt with two, the American Athletic with one, and obviously Notre Dame being the other independent. Yeah, the Pac-12 with five to me just – I know they're, they're further down, but still I just don't get it. The Pac-12 I don't think is very good. Um, I don't – quite frankly, and this is not an A&M guy, this is just – I don't get Texas at 21. I don't get it. They're seven – what, seven and three last yeah. year? And – they don't have Ellinger or Osai, right? The, the, their best defensive player, or the Cosmo Kramer, or whatever his name is, the <laughs> offensive tackle that's now playing, I think, for the Redskins or something like. That. So they, they, you're taking off some of their very best players. Now I get it; they have a heck of a running back, yeah, uh, a star. So um, I get that, and a smart coach is going to make sure he gets the ball 20 times a game. But still, uh, I look at a team that went seven and three and lost four or five of its very best players, and you're going to tell me they're going to be better. I'm just not sure I'm going to buy that. And in years past, a big part of Texas's problem has been development. You look at the development that we've seen here beyond the five and the four stars. Wasn't Jalen Watermeyer a three-star coming out? I think he was a four-star. Was he a four-star? But he must have been one of those lower four stars, but I'm pretty sure he was a four. And Anias? Anias was definitely a three. Okay. And both of those guys are playing at – 
five first, star level, five star level NFL first round pick level. Right. I don't. And, and but. Both of those are what I call first round talents. Doesn't necessarily mean they'll be first round because tight ends all often don't go in the first round, right. no matter. And I don't know what Anias's top end speed is, right? So you know the measurables will get you into the first round. And uh, let's say he's a four or five that that might scare some people off, but then he'll be that guy that was if that was taken in the second round. And you're going to be thinking, man, look how many first rounders he was better than, and how many people passed on him. Wow. It could have been a difference maker. No, he is. Uh, but I, I see what what Jimbo's doing here, and he is doing the five stars and the four stars, and that and that size that we talked about when we went to that mm-hmm. first for those first couple of practices. But he's also developing guys, and I mean, I'll, I'll give Eli Stowers as an example, putting players in positions to help your team. Oh, you know, Stowers, yeah, uh, a guy who's athletic like that, um, more than likely, if you keep him at quarterback all year long, he's going to do nothing but hold a clipboard and 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 learn. Um, if you let him play some at tight end, you know, a guy that athletic might make some plays for you. The only thing I'd be concerned about is where is he during the week? Is he in the quarterback room? Is he in the tight end room? Because if he's in the tight end room, he's not learning the quarterback he's not, room. He's not learning the quarterback. And if he's in the quarterback room, exactly what can you do in the tight end? But you know what? They know what they're doing. I think to get the, and I know you saw this too, the, the position change that made you know my eyebrows raise and say, well, this makes perfect sense. Uh, from what I read, is Max Wright's playing fullback. Right. And that is. Uh, you know, people just don't respect fullback as much anymore. But gosh, when you have a good one, it makes such a difference. It, it does, and and that you know, Max Wright has good speed uh, for a guy his size, and he can catch the ball, which he showed against South Carolina. I mean, he could be that fullback that you throw the, into the flat, and he actually can turn it up and make something. Uh, so, yeah, I think yeah, you know, I think I think that's a perfect example of what you're getting at. The next time we get to go to practice, that might be somebody I need to, to focus in on because I, I just want to see how they're using them, what they're, again, what we get to see, which isn't, you know, is not the entire playbook for sure. And well, it won't be a lot. Yeah. But, um, but when you do, do have a guy in there um, and you do want to use your fullback, so, you know, you've got a guy that has enough speed to play, you know, tight end. And again, we saw it against South Carolina, but also has that, defensive ends mentality. So I'm sure he's not going to shy away from contact at all. Big guy that can lead, uh, you know, can get on on the uh, as an H back and make something happen or just get in at full back and attack a defensive end, try to kick out a linebacker or something like that, the size and the mentality to do it. It's just that, that's so obvious, such an obvious move that it's genius. Back to uh, Oklahoma for a minute. A minute there at number two. Are you big on Spencer Rattler? Yeah, I think he's really good. Yeah. Um, there's some other things about Oklahoma I'm not big on. I question uh, how good they're going to be at the line of scrimmage. Now, are they going to look great at the line of scrimmage in the games they play? Yeah, because the same thing same I, thing I we said. About. They've just they're going to out recruit everybody. Kansas State is not going to recruit with with Oklahoma. Kansas. TCU is actually recruiting pretty well, I understand, but I still question if they're going to recruit at Oklahoma's level, right? Um, and, and that's why when they get into uh, the the playoff and they play better teams, they struggle. One year, you'll remember it, they're playing really well against uh, Georgia. They're moving the ball. Georgia goes in at halftime says, okay, this is what they're doing. Let's make the adjustment and just shut them down. You know, they were doing something that Georgia hadn't seen or hadn't seen a lot of. They just needed some time to say, okay, this is what we're going to do. And then they just owned it. Yep. Right? So, and then they played Alabama. They couldn't hang with them. Yeah, they beat Florida, but we all know the situation there. Um, So, typically, when they get into a a, a playoff, Clemson just owns them every time they play them. Uh, Then you see the differences uh, in in their, you know, at the line of scrimmage. Are they good at the skill positions? Absolutely. Do you... And, and along the lines of conference realignment and the expansion and whatnot, do you care, worry about those other schools that have been the Oklahoma States of the world who have consistently under Mike Gundy been a very good program to where their future could be, the TCUs of the world, the Iowa States where they are right now, where their future could be? Um, worry? 
Well, I'm just saying, worry maybe about the game of college football. Like, I think we're all here, all about A&M, and we don't... But beyond that, just the, 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 the strength of the game beyond just your 24 top yeah. 32 schools. I always have said multiple times that I thought that at some point the, uh, the haves would break off and quit letting the have-nots dictate what they were doing. And that's been happening since autonomy a few years ago. Uh, so I always envisioned this, this scenario where you'd have somewhere between 60 to 72 teams playing in the upper division. I'll admit that I always envisioned that scenario, including – Oklahoma State and Iowa State and Kansas State because I thought the Big 12 would be able to hang on because I thought the uh, SEC, quite frankly, would never take a Texas because I thought they would honor the deal that they had with A&M. But that said, uh, I, if I was a big fan of Oklahoma State or Iowa State I would, or Baylor, I'd be – especially Baylor – and, and, and TCU, you know, private schools, I would be really concerned. I would not be at all surprised if the Pac-12 reached out at some point to Oklahoma State, to Texas Tech. But I do know this, the Pac-12 in the past, especially with Cal and Stanford leading the way, have been adamantly opposed to adding universities that are church-based, which is why they would never take BYU. Right. And I don't see – if you wouldn't take BYU and all they have to offer, I don't think – I just don't see you'd ever take TCU or, or Baylor. Am I right, though, that TCU has kind of dropped the, the – not, not, not necessarily a loose affiliation, perhaps? Yeah, a loose affiliation. That, that, that's probably true, but it still has the name. And I just think that Cal and Stanford and, and some of those other West Coast will uh, – and I could be wrong on that, but I just think they will never – um, they'll never change that policy. Ob, when's the last time you wore a soccer jersey? Uh, jersey or yeah. t-shirt? Both. Let's go both. Okay, the last uh, soccer jersey I wore was probably about uh, here it comes four or five years ago. Really? Well, my mother-in-law went to Italy. Okay, and she brought me this uh, Italia whatever. Okay, jersey, and it was kind of nice. It was nice. So I wore it. Okay, and then it shrunk. Okay. Well, it's because uh, you've been doing that. Or I got bigger. <laughs> you've been doing those bicep curls. The only reason I ask is look at this. With a fork. Isn't this nice? Aggieland Outfitters. Guys, I want to remind you to text 900-900 for your chance to win the Big Friday giveaway, courtesy of our friends at Aggieland Outfitters. And I'm looking at it right now. This one is the uh, Adidas Three Stripes soccer jersey. I love it. It is really comfortable, really nice. 100% polyester, uh, aero-ready technology powered by moisture-wicking fabric that absorbs the water out there. Also made with prime green and performance fabric, which contains no virgin or newly created plastic. Perfect for wearing to soccer games in the fall, even wearing to a football game. Why not? Support your Aggie soccer team in this jersey. They've got all the sizes. The Adidas 2021 soccer jersey valued at $44.99. I, uh, I'm, this is one of those that I'm going to try to keep. Okay. Is that, a, is that a soccer thing, putting the, the, the crest the zero, right there? No, I'm saying the zero on the number. Zero three instead of just three. Is that yes, a soccer they, thing? Yes, they, they do that often in soccer. Not always, but yeah, they do that in, okay. in soccer. There, there are just a seven and just a three, but yes, I've seen that as well. All right, it is Aggieland Outfitters. Thank you so much to our friends Fadi and the crew over there. You're listening to The Zone. The Zone. 11.50 a.m. Sports Radio. And 93.7 FM. Howdy, we're Chad and Darla Wooten, your local owners at Cooper's Old Time Pit Barbecue. We just want to send a big, heartfelt thank you out to everyone for voting us Best Barbecue and Catering in the Brazos Valley for two consecutive years. Dine in, picked up, or catered, we encourage you to enjoy our family's award-winning barbecue cooked cowboy style over mesquite coals. Experience the taste of locally Aggie-owned, nationally recognized Cooper's Old Time Pit Barbecue. Voted Best Barbecue in the Brazos Valley and proud supporter of Texas A&M Athletics. Athletics. For the ones who know that a little late is always too late. And that the clock doesn't stop just because you're missing a part. Granger offers supplies and solutions for every industry. And our Keep Stock Inventory Management Solutions help ensure you have the right stuff in the right place at exactly the right time. Visit Granger.com slash Keepstock to learn more. Granger for the ones who get it done. 
The Bellucci Hour is back. It is back at the tap every Monday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Thanks to King Ranch Saddle Shop. Join Billy Lucci of Texags, texags.com, Texags Radio, and the Lucci Cast, along with Zach Taylor, the Infomaniac, and Sports Director of Brian Broadcasting. Monday, Thursday, 6 p.m. It's the Bellucci Hour happy hour and it's all thanks to king ranch saddle shop let the Bellucci hour get you ready for aggie football 2021 our publications reach every corner of the brazos valley and we want to partner with you in sharing your message with the community you may recognize a few of our brian broadcasting publications best of the brazos valley brazos life the annual manual welcome home brazos valley brazos family brazos wellness brazos valley bride peace brazos christian life with the combined power of seven magazine titles 11 radio stations and digital solutions, Brian Broadcasting Publications can help you be heard. Call 979-695-9595 to learn more. I can do this. We believe in you. Each day brings hope. Every day, millions of people celebrate their recovery from addiction and mental illness while others begin their journey. Be a part of it. Share your strength, support, and hope. Join the Voices for Recovery. Together, we are stronger. For 24-hour free and confidential information and treatment referral for mental and substance use disorders for you or someone you know, call 1-800-662-HELP. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Start your sports day with Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin. Powered by WC Tractor, weekday mornings 5 to 8 on 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Or just tell your smart speaker to play Play Sony 1150. WC Tractor is your local award-winning Kubota and New Holland dealer. Call them with your questions at 1-888-8-TRACTOR. That's 1-888-8-TRACTOR. Check them out online at wctractor.com. Rise and shine weekday mornings 5 to 8 with Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin from ESPN ESPN Radio. Radio. Powered by WC Tractor here on The Zone. Well, um, obviously, I, I think I'm in that uh, in that space of being a big playmaker. Um, I have confidence in myself and my abilities and what I'm able to do. But um, I just feel like I should be in that conversation because of what I've shown and from the Mississippi State game and just um, how I prepare every day. Um, I try to prepare like a pro and just um, be ready for my moments as they come. And that is Chase Lane. He's number nine on our 21 and 21, presented by Factory Builder Stores, celebrating over 30 years as the largest contract distributor in Texas. Factory Builder Stores can service builders and the general public with locations throughout Texas, including right here in College Station on Old Welburn Road and Rock Prairie, just on the west side of the railroad tracks. Go see our friends, Jason and John. They're going to take great care of you and any of your appliance needs. And OB, I feel like we... Yesterday, we did Leon O'Neill at number 10, but we did talk a lot about Chase Lane because he was one of the speakers on Sunday. We could have done 10 and 9 yesterday because we did talk about Chase quite a bit, but uh, just uh, a a guy that you've written about recently, a guy that really is just impressive on many fronts, not just football, just on life, just a worldly guy. Yeah, I like him a lot. I like the threat that he is Um, because let's be honest, we can really love guys and they're they're personalities sure. and what they, but what we're really going to ultimately judge them by um, is what, is what they do on the field, because that's why, I mean, we can really root for somebody to be successful, but nobody buys a season ticket to watch somebody have a good career, except for they're playing football. Right. And the thing about Chase Lane is he's both, man. He's a guy that you can root for and see that he's going places uh, after his playing career. But right now, He's a guy that can really make a difference for you. He's a he is a playmaker. I looked it up. He only had 29 catches last year. Mm-hmm. Adam didn't throw it around a lot. When they did, it was usually the nice. Uh, five of those went for 20 yards. That's 5.8 times uh, yards per- a 20 yard catch. Yep. Now that doesn't include he had a 19 yard catch in one of those games. So it's almost there. Um, he's a productive guy. I was looking it up. You know, he had that 16 yard catch on third down against Florida that made what would have been a 52-yard field goal, set it up into a chip shot to win that game. He had the 51-yard catch. It was a five-yard catch that he turned to a 51-yard touchdown against Mississippi State. It was on a third and two. He had a catch against Tennessee that became a 36-yard game. Uh, at Auburn, you'll remember this, A&M was looking at a third and seven, and he makes a catch for a, like a 15-yard game. You may not remember that, but you'll remember the very next play was the Jalen Widemeyer touchdown oh, catch yeah. that re- deflected off the linebacker mm-hmm. and, and gave A&M a 21-20 lead in the fourth quarter. Well, that doesn't happen. 
if if, make that if play. Lane doesn't make the play beforehand. And then of course they uh the Aggies were trailing late in the first half of the Orange Bowl, looking at about a third and seven, third and eight, and Chase Lane makes a a, a leaping catch for about twenty six yards across the middle, uh, and keeps that drive going. A and M eventually scores a touchdown. Uh, I think it was Isaiah Spiller to take a, a halftime lead, 17-13. Once again, doesn't happen without Chase Lane coming up on third down. Chase Lane's a productive guy when they look to him. They just got to look to him more often. More often, and, and again, on this kind of offense and this this kind of playmakers, it's it's easy to have to, you have to distribute to so many people. Look at I'm, I want that picture brought up for a second because. I don't know, B. You tell me. I, I saw him the other day. He looks like he's bulked up a little bit too. He's put on some muscle in the, in the off season. Well, I'm not surprised at that. I mean, A and M has probably as good of I won't even say probably. A and M has as good or better of strength and conditioning program as anybody in the country. That's with Jerry Schmidt and, and his guys. So that wouldn't surprise me at all. And I believe in that picture that we saw. I'm sorry, that's bad radio, but we had a picture up of him against Tennessee, and I think that was the play where he spun around and turned a. a a short pass into another, you know, long gain, and that's the one where he tweeted out said his foot was hurt, and if it wasn't foot, if it wasn't hurt, they wouldn't have caught him. I don't know if that's true because the guy who caught him had a run and start, but the fact of the matter is, he is a guy with good speed. He showed that against Mississippi State again. Five yard touch, a five yard catch turns into a fifty one yard touchdown. That doesn't happen if you can't if you can't move. Um, reliable hands. Um, I love, and we talked about this before, I love the idea of Chase Lane, a guy like that, being your third or fourth option because that means in, in man coverage, he's probably drawing the third or fourth yes, best cover is. guy. And that's a mismatch. You win championships with guys like Chase Lane. Absolutely. Guys who come up big on third downs are what championship teams are built from. Yes, you have to have the top end guys. You have to have the Aniases. Don't get me wrong. But you win championships because of those kind of plays that you illustrated a moment ago. Yeah, I'm going to use a uh, – please uh, forgive me for this. I'm going to use a, a, a Texas example because I was covering – I was in Austin at the time. When Texas won the national championship, there was a guy from Cameron named Billy Pittman who – wasn't their number one receiver. I mean, he was just a guy, another starter that was ob- often in a, a role like Chase is that came up big time after time after time, made big catches. And the people up Cameron will remember it because you know no matter where, they're, where he's going, you're going to root for your guy f- from your hometown. And I see Chase as a, bet, a more athletic version of that. I think in a lot of ways, Chase at a lot of places would be your number one receiver. Yeah, and he might eventually be that here, right? I mean, he's a big play kind of player. He has a knack for some some just explosive plays. And for a team that really lacked in that last season, he came up big with a couple of those, as you mentioned. Yeah, I think as long as number zero's out there, he, he, he won't be. And, right. But, again, he's that guy that, that – if, if you're a defensive coordinator, okay, you're a defensive coordinator for Alabama, and you're figuring out what – what are you going to do to st- stop out A and M? And who you got it? Who's the first guy you're going to try to stop? You're going to try to stop the Nias, right? And then, who's next? Isaiah. Yeah, and then and then who? Uh, th- then you're confused. Who else can you stop? Because well, you got pl- uh, Jalen Watermeyer. Watermeyer. I mean, and that and that's when the, does Chase Lane enter your your thought? Maybe process? fourth. May or and if if Chapman comes back strong, maybe, maybe fifth. And that's why I'm loving Chase Lane. Because he could be number two. He could be number two. Some places he's number one, and he's going to be going against your fourth or fifth guy in man coverage a lot. He's going to win those. Chase Lane is that kind of guy that just gets overlooked by everybody until you look at the stat sheet. And all they have to do is look to him more. Now, I understand why they didn't last year. They became a running team, and they would pass, um, I don't want to say out of necessity, but just, went, you know, at the right time, they're looking. And then you're going to look for Anias and Watermeyer. But when they look for Chase Lane, I do not know the the ratio of targets to catches, but it's got to be very high. And again, it was he was a he was a first down machine on third down. He also, again, how you play on the field will determine how we look at you long term. But just listening to him speak on Sunday, just, I mean, just a, a very sharp, guy. sharp, thoughtful responses. And then I'm seeing him at practice, and he's got a quiet, 
demeanor to him, but he's also very intense at the same time. It's kind of a quiet intensity. Like he's he's looking at each rep, each step with that with that focus, but not rah rah kind of guy. At least not what I saw. Yeah, and it's probably not uh, just because if I, I'm guessing uh, if that's not just his personality, if maybe there's a I don't want to call it a pecking order, but whatever you know, sure you're going to react to. To Anias first or somebody else, and maybe it's just waiting his time. Which we've seen time and time again. All right, uh, so we've got uh, Shireen Williams coming on oh, the show here awesome. in a little bit. So we'll talk to Shireen, talk a little bit about what is going on in the world of NFL and her thoughts on Aggies out there as what they're doing, um, getting ready for the NFL season to start. Of course, we'll get her take on what's going on here at, uh, at Texas A&M as well. You're listening to Tex Ags Radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers. I'm Chelsea Reber with your community calendar on The Zone. The prenatal clinic is now accepting honoree nominations for the 28th annual You're the Tops event. The nomination form can be downloaded at bcsprenatal.org. The deadline is August 31st. The Arts Council of Brazos Valley is hosting Celebrate the Arts on Wednesday, September 1st, starting at 6 p.m. at the Stella Hotel. Purchase your tickets online at acbv.org. Success Innovations Online is hosting a live public watch party for the Faith Driven Entrepreneur Conference on Wednesday, September 8th at Star Cinema Grill. Local business owners interested in attending can contact Shannon at 979-220-4747. You can hear Aggie football, Aggie basketball, and Aggie baseball right here on Zone 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Online, listen to your favorite Aggie teams play at RadioAggieland.com. I'm Tulsi Reber on The Zone. When seconds matter in the game, every single decision made can mean a big win or a frustrating loss. When it comes to buying your next home and selling your existing home in the current market, every decision can mean serious money. Aggie fans, it's Dave South, and as you know, I've studied the best players and the best teams to represent our A&M family. One thing I've learned over the years, the best coaches have the respect of their team and the 12th man, you, the fans. In Bryan College Station, no realtor has more five-star reviews on Google than Lance Lester and his team at the Lester Group. Why is that simple no one offers more options that benefit you if you want to buy your next home before you sell your current home lance can help you do that if you want to know the date and price that you can count on your home selling for lance can guarantee it in writing when the game is on the line you want a leader with a proven track record calling the shots get your home sold faster and for the most money work with my friend lance lester and the lester group go to the lestergroup.com that's the lestergroup.com and experience lightning in a bottle selling your home at United Roofing and Sheet Metal, we've got you covered inside and out. Need help with your high wind or hail damage claims? Call Larry Winkler and the fine folks at United. United Roofing is your local, professional, family-owned business with over 40 years of service to the Brazos Valley. United is your insurance claim specialist, providing the most comprehensive full-system labor and material warranty in the roofing industry. Call United today at 268-ROOF. The flagship station for Aggie Athletics is The Zone. Whenever the Aggies are playing, you can hear them right here at 1150 and 93.7 FM. Thanks to our listeners and our sponsors for backing the Aggies all season long. First Financial Bank, Bryan College Station Toyota, Rudy's Barbecue, Schulte Roofing, The Sleep Station, and Pioneer Steel. Here's a big gig to all these sponsors. Listen to Aggie Athletics on The Zone 1150 and 93.7 FM. The best is yet to come in College Station. Chase Lane is in for a touchdown! Yes! Head coach Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies are ready to rise to the top of the SEC. Swing to Anias. He's in the end zone. A six-yard reception. Join us Saturday, September 4th. It's the season opener versus the Kent State Golden Flashes. On your home for Aggies football. The Texas A&M Sports Network. Listen to Aggie football on 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Online at RadioAggieland.com. Or Or. tell your smart speaker to play Zone 1150. All right, guys, be caller number one. We're going to give you a free car wash from Aggieland Express Car Wash in South College Station off of William D. Fitch and Greens Prairie. 
Aggie owned and operated with the friendliest staff and personal touch. The They offer monthly memberships. We're going to give the first caller a free car wash right now on Aggie Land Express in South College Station. Just call 979-693-1150. You're listening to Tex Ag's radio presented by David Gardner's Jewelers here in the Rollo Insurance Studio. And uh, with that, we're going to go to the BCS iHotline. We are joined by Shereen Williams here on the program. She's been covering the NFL for the last, what, 28 years. Uh, Dick McCann Award winner in 2018, Hall of Fame voter. She does it all, and she joins us here and is a great Aggie. How are you today, uh, Shereen? That would be my fault for not putting her on. That's We're going to blame that one on me. Shereen, we'll try that again. Hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> Trying to cut me off on you. I'm good. I'm just impressed that someone in charge will take the uh, responsibility for the mistake. I'll fall on the grenade this time, even though it was Dalton's fault. It's always Dalton's <laughs> mistake. Hey, so uh, let, what, what can we? What, what what have we learned about the Cowboys through two preseason games? Where I know a lot of the starters obviously haven't played, but uh, what what did you learn this past one against Arizona? You know, I just think that their defense is better. I think that's the key thing. Um, it couldn't be as bad as it was last year. It's never been as bad as it was last year. They have the most points in franchise history. So they had to be better than that. And I think Dan Quinn has come in and put his stamp on it. You see Michael Parsons. He's going to be very active. Now, he's also going to overrun some plays, and he's going to get beat on some stuff that he's never seen before. So there's some of that kind of too. But, yeah, life is aggressive aggressiveness and his ability to play sideline to sideline. He can do pretty much whatever you want him to do. And you know, I really think that's one thing that's been missing from this Cowboys defense. Um, you know, maybe you had that linebacker play from Leighton Vanderesh first year, but he wasn't quite like this guy, Micah Parsons. He didn't have the speed and, and some of the ability that, that Micah has. So I think he's going to make a huge difference on this defense. But you're right. Through two preseason games, we haven't seen a lot of the starters, so it's really hard to get a good feel for exactly what they're going to look like. And you may not see many of the last two preseason games either. Is Amari Cooper going to remain with this team? You know, Olin, I think just based on right now where we are today, I think this is probably his last year with the Cowboys now. They'll have some decisions to make based on what happens this year. They can keep him. Or they could try to sign Michael Gallup, as we know, is going to become a free agent next spring. In my opinion, I think Michael Gallup is the number one receiver. I love Michael Gallup. I've said it repeatedly on Twitter. I think he's a fantastic receiver. He, if he goes somewhere else, he's going to be a number one receiver. He's going to get a ton of opportunities. He's going to see just how good he is. I think he's a really good receiver. So to me, you base it on what happens this year. If Michael Gallup comes out and has a great year and Amari Cooper stays injured like he has been, then to me, you go out and use that money to re-sign or try to re-sign Michael Gallup, put the franchise tag on him, whatever you have to do to keep him. If Amari Cooper comes out, stays healthy all 17 games, has a good year, then then you keep Amari Cooper. It's simple. He's under contract. But they can get out of this contract. You're exactly right on after this year. It's easy to get out of it. Guaranteed money's mostly gone. So, that would be an easy time to move on if they want to move on from Amari Cooper. But C.D. Lamb, obviously, you've got, to, you've got to feed him, too. So they got a lot of receivers here, and I just think it's going to come down to a decision between keeping trying to keep Michael Gallup or keeping Amari Cooper after this year. Shereen, I have to admit, this is the first time, I think, in 20 years, whatever, however long it's been, that I haven't watched Hard Knocks. And uh, because I don't have cable <laughs> at the house, we're in transition, moving, and whatnot. Well, we'll has, has it been a good season? Have you watched any of it? Have, have, can you see them around? Yeah, there's been there's been one show so far. The second one comes on tonight. And, you know, the first one was good just because you got to see behind the scenes of what went on during Dak Prescott's shoulder injury uh, and the aftermath of that. And so that standpoint, I wrote something off of it based on that. So, I love Hard Knocks just because you do get the behind the scenes. I thought it got kind of lost last year when they had the combo of the Chargers and the Rams. I didn't like that as much. But this year, I think, uh, so far anyway, through one episode, has has been very good uh, with with the behind the scenes stuff. And, you know, I think fans sometimes don't realize how much profanity these guys use. And (laughs) you certainly got to see it last week with Dak. 
with all the bad words uh, that he used last week. <laughs> Fit right in. Um, uh, Shereen, please, as a uh, someone who sees this team, I know it's only been two two practices, but moving forward, tell yeah. me about three areas: offensive line, pass rush, secondary. Uh, do you feel good or do you feel apprehensive? You know, you feel that sounded apprehensive about the <laughs> offensive line. Yeah, well, about the offensive line, you're apprehensive about it just because uh, of the injury situation. I just don't have any sort of good feel for Tyron Smith playing, being healthy for 17 games. And he's just such a big part of, of what they need. And frankly, Dorrance Armstrong has really taken advantage of him. Uh, yesterday in practice, I mean, he was all over him, and Tyron Smith did not look good. So, there, yes, your left tackle is the key to your offensive line, and he hasn't looked good, and he hasn't stayed healthy, as we know. <clears throat> so I do have some concerns about the offensive line. Now, we're talking about Dorrance Armstrong and the pass rush. You can count on Dorrance Armstrong, the great pass rusher, for you. So I, I think there's a level of confidence there with the pass rush that it's going to be pretty darn good with Randy Gregory and Demarcus Lawrence and everybody else you have rushing the passer there. Michael Parsons is going to be involved in some of that uh, as a blitzer. So I, I I feel pretty good about that pass rush, and I think we feel pretty good about the the, the corners um, with with what they got with the young guys and some of the guys coming back. I, I think it's a good group of corners now. Safety. You know, who's going with Donovan Wilson? They love Donovan, as we know. He's going to be a big part of what they do. But, you know, what else do you do there at safety? So, some concern there at safety. But the corners, I think we feel pretty good about those guys and, and those young guys and the way they performed in practice and games so far. Shereen, were you able to watch any or get, read about uh, Kellen's performance here this past weekend? Yeah, I watched quite a bit of it, actually. And, for having two practices, I, I thought he did a good job. Uh, he's got a long way to go, uh, and he needs practice time. He needs those reps, and it's unfortunate that, you know, we, we go into vaccines or not vaccines, but the fact was he wasn't vaccinated and he got COVID and, and he missed all those practices, which were very valuable and he needed. So um, he he can't make up for that, and he's not going to make up for that. And once the season starts, he's not going to get very many reps. So. He's got to take advantage of these next two weeks and these preseason games that Kirk Cousins doesn't play um, because that's all he's going to get for the year. And after that, he's going to be standing on the sideline holding a clipboard and watching Kirk Cousins practice and watching Kirk Cousins play. Just not a lot of time uh, under center after that. But, yeah, for two practices, I thought he did a pretty darn good job. He'll get some more opportunities in these last two preseason games. And, again, it's something he's got to take advantage of. Yeah, I thought he was uh, actually pretty good considering that he got minimal, and I say minimal protection. So, yeah, um, yeah. But back to the Cowboys. Um, uh, is, is their success just as, as simple as uh, uh, how how healthy is Dak going to be? I don't know if it's that simple. Only just because you go back to last year, what's the point to that? Okay, that happened in Week Five, and the games that Dak started and finished, which there were four of them, they were one and three, and we know they got lucky in that Atlanta game, right? So, I don't think it's as simple as that. I mean, the defense has obviously got to be better than what it was. Ezekiel Elliott has got to be better than what he was last year when he was a fumble machine. You can't turn it over like that. So, they're, they're, the offensive line has got to be better and got to stay healthy. To me, there's just, you know, again, I go back to this team has so many ifs on it. If, 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 they'll be a really good team. And just look around the NFC. You don't have to look around the NFL. Just look around the NFC. I just don't see those ifs with the Packers. I don't see those ifs um, with the Buccaneers. You know, some other teams, yes, have ifs in the NFC. I don't see as many ifs on Washington. Um, if you know, Fitzpatrick, I guess, is the only if on that team, but their defense looks really good. Their offensive lines got everything else about that team is good. So the Cowboys just have so many. Yeah, if the offensive line stays healthy, if the secondary plays like you think to play, if the defense is better, if the pass rush is, 
is better. I mean, all those things. If Ezekiel Elliott doesn't fumble, are all these things going to happen? Probably not all of them. Do, do enough of them happen that they can get to playoffs? Yeah, I think so. I, to me, they look like a playoff team, but to me, they look like a wild card playoff team. You know, I, we know the division's not that great. They'll have a chance to win the division, no question about that. But I, I just don't look at the NFC and automatically go, hey, the Cowboys are one of the top three teams. In the NFC, if all those things stay right, can they compete? Absolutely they can compete. But that's a lot of ifs to, to come out in your favor to, to make it happen. Hey, Shereen, I came across this tweet earlier. Uh, Pro Football Focus has the highest-graded rookies this preseason. Two of those are from the Steelers uh, and Aggies, Dan Moore Jr. and Buddy Johnson. Yeah. Uh, kind of what we yeah. expected here in, in, in College Station. Yeah. You know, and I got to see him play, obviously, at the Hall of Fame game. In person, I was up there. It was a fantastic weekend with all those guys going into the Hall of Fame and then, and then the game. And I thought Buddy Johnson looked fantastic. And, that, and I know Pro Football Focus graded him. I remember it came out of that game talking about Michael Parsons. But Pro Football Focus graded uh, Buddy as the, as the best linebacker in that game. And I thought he was very active and did a lot of great things. And I think we get to see him. Uh, play and play a lot with with the Steelers and a perfect fit for both of those guys to go to Pittsburgh that they have a chance to win right away, play right away, uh, and they've just gone to a really good place that contends every single year. I can't remember off the top of my head how long it's been since Pittsburgh's had a losing record. Now they did have an eight eight record, which we can't do anymore. But uh, it's been a years and years and years. This Steelers have had a losing record. They contend every single year. Either even when Ben Roethlisberger wasn't there, they contended that year for the playoffs. But they didn't get into the playoffs, but they contended. They're just really good year after year after year. So a good spot for both of those guys to land. You're going to get to see them play, and you're going to get to see them play and produce on a really good football team with really good coaching. Shereen, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. All right, Shereen Williams there joining us here on Tech Sags Radio, presented by David Garner's Jewelers. Right now, a moment for our friends at Caldwell Country Chevrolet, Highway 21 in Caldwell, and online, caldwellcountrychevrolet.com. Zach Hester and the crew, he, Zach is the best. I, I've been saying it. I said it before I knew, you know, because I was basing it on what others were telling me, what Gabe was telling me, what Billy was telling me, what Bronny was telling me, all these people who have dealt with him. They've all said amazing things uh, about Zach and the, and the crew over there. And I got to, to meet him a couple of weeks back. And just like uh, Schloss, he's now my new BFF there. Um, and it, it's been cool to see and, and just get that relationship going with Zach because I know he's going to give you top dollar for your trade-in. If you've got a car you're trying to get rid of or you're thinking about getting rid of in a couple of months, you might want to do it right now because they're paying top dollar because there's a shortage there on those used vehicles, and they'll help you get your brand new one. That's what you want to do. You want to deal with people you can trust and give you the best value, right? That's what they do. It takes about 15 minutes from Brian to Caldwell, just a short conversation away. But you're going to see the difference when you step on the lot there and start doing business with Zach and the fellows at Caldwell Country. Highway 21 in Caldwell and online at CaldwellCountryChevrolet.com. This is Eggie Land's home for sports. The Zone 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Because there's only one you, Views Alto is the vape as unique as you are. With Views by You, you can make your unique mix with any of four colors, three flavors, three nicotine levels, and infinite wrap designs. So how will you do you? Make Views Alto a vape that is yours. In store now. Discover more at Views.com. Views. Charge beyond. Vapor products. Underage sale prohibited. Website and offers restricted to age 21 and over tobacco consumers. We think it's time for a laugh. Brian Broadcasting and the Nikki Peterson Talent Network present Good Clean Fun, a comedy night with Carrie Pomeroy. So you guys, yes, I am a member of the Mommy Mafia. I have two kids. I have a four-year-old and a good one. Hollywood's favorite clean comedian is live in College Station, Friday, September 3rd at 7 p.m. at Skybreak Church. I was in the Zuma class, and there's this teacher, right? And she's all cute and sassy, and she's like, shake what your mama gave you. I'm in the back row going, my mama gave me sciatica and allergies. Bring your friends, bring a date, bring anyone who's ready for a good time. You guys, who's happy just to be out of the house? Really? Right, right? 
Good Clean Fun, a comedy night with Carrie Pomeroli, September 3rd, presented by Nikki Peterson Talent Network. Be discovered. Thanks in part to our sponsors, Strata Auto Repair, Mark's Manny's Appliance Repair and Cleaning Service, Dirt Road Rustics Furniture and Home Decor, Buff City Soap, Soap Makery, and Longway Home Adoptables. Tickets, VIP, and group packages available at brianbroadcasting.com. The flagship station for Aggie Athletics is The Zone. Whenever the Aggies are playing, you can hear them right here at 1150 and 93.7 FM. Thank you to all our listeners and our sponsors for backing the Aggies all year long. Cooper's Old Time Pit Barbecue, Swarman Flooring, Prosperity Bank, Hargrove Insurance, Park at Traditions Exceptional Senior Living, Cherry Rafino Broker Realtor with Coldwell Banker Apex Realtors, and Amarillo National Bank. Here's a big gig to all these sponsors. Listen to Aggie Athletics on The Zone 1150 and 93.7. FM. You have the right to know. The right to know about culture. The right to know about the economy. The right to know about technology and to know about sports. You have the right to know about education and politics and the weather. You have the right to know what's happening abroad and in your backyard. But above all else, you have the right to know that this right is under attack and we must work to protect it. Because in order to be free, we must be informed. Understand the threats. ProtectPressFreedom.org. On Sports Talk, Chip visits with Jeff Bergman, the voice of everyone's favorite cartoon characters. Well, I have to say the voice of the rabbit dog. Nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, I say, I say, I say, Foghorn Leghorn. <laughs> uh, no, I say, nice boy, but about as sharp as a sack of wet mice. <laughs> Sports Talk, the voice of reason. Weekdays from 4 to 6 on Sports Radio 1150 AM and 93.7 FM. Ah, uh, thanks, Chip. 